Thank you, Luca, and good morning. At UTS, we're very passionate about social justice. So for me, it's a real pleasure to be here at the Global Ideas Forum, where this is such a, a strong theme. And as we begin, I too wish to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, on whose ancestral lands this university stands, and pay respects to elders past and present, and acknowledge them as traditional custodians of knowledge for this place. Now this place has certainly changed quite considerably since uh, I was a student here 20 years ago. It has, pr uh, at, at Melbourne University, it's changed profoundly over the last 200 years. And if we think beyond that to the 2000 and beyond years beforehand, that people have been coming together here to build on the knowledge that's been generated beforehand and think to the future about how we use that to build into our, our, our culture to look after country for the long term. And for me it says it's so important now that each of us find a role to play in supporting cultures that are consistent with looking after country here but also our planet globally in the long term. And I think circular economy has an exciting role to play in refreshing our broken uh, culture of, of production and consumption that exists today. So the challenge before us is that we have urban populations who are confronting ever greater instability in the climate, in the societies and economy, that currently underpins uh, much, of, uh, much of our world. And the model underneath this is really one where we are just extracting resources at an ever greater rate to feed prolific consumption. And many of you might have watched the, the war on waste. We're really at the top of the league table here in Australia for doing the wrong thing. We've got two tonnes per person of, of waste that we generate. When I was uh, studying my thesis, it was all about the environmental impacts of copper mining. And back in Australia, 150 years ago, if you were to dig some copper from the ground, 10% of it would have been metal and the rest waste. Now, we're down to about 1%. So, to get the same amount of metal, there's so much more energy, so much more waste, and not to mention the 50,000 legacy mine sites we need to think about rehabilitating just in Australia alone. So for me, it says we need inclusive pathways to responsible prosperity here and, and globally. And it's fantastic that the Sustainable Development Goals are giving focus to this path. Two side trends to note. The transition really is underway towards clean energy. And whilst this offers promise, we need to be thoughtful in how we navigate this in a digital future. Cleaning up coal-fired power stations, yes, it makes cleaner air, but we need to think, even if we look to the Latrobe Valley, about what jobs can we provide in that local economy to sustain, uh, sustain communities. So the circular economy. We've got here, I think, a, a real step change in the profile that business uh, can, can take, a uh, step change in the profile of the concept thanks to putting business at the centre of driving innovation that's uh, circular. When I was studying this topic uh, back at university, it was really the engineers and scientists with a vision for sustainability that were championing industrial ecology, so studying just patterns of what resources we're using and consuming and how much energy, and then thinking forward also to what futures might be. There was some consideration of the social dimensions, some consideration of the role that design could play, and a little of the economics. But in particular, the Alan MacArthur Foundation have done a fantastic effort to put firms and businesses at the centre of, of driving this opportunity. So it's about, as noted there, slowing, narrowing and, and closing material and energy loops 
through. You know, we heard the great uh, line last night that if we've got a two for one pizza deal, maybe just say thanks, you know, one will be enough. I think things like if, some, if we're offering, uh, you know, a cheap pair of clothes or shoes or something, we can equally say thanks. No, I'll save up and buy quality that's going to be longer lasting that will be able to be handed on to someone else, that we can set up cycles for repair and reuse and so on. So this is really at the heart of what's happening. Now it's taken off globally. Japan were very early in identifying this through their um, policy for a sound material cycle society. China's written it into their 12th five year plan. Europe's got a, a massive package to activate the circular economy. In Australia, the, the momentum is still, still building, so that's really a role for, uh, for all of you here. And there's an economic opportunity that goes along with it. In Australia, we estimated the you know, order of uh, you know, uh, billions per year in the coming decade, globally, towards trillions. Now, what I'm showing here is a framework put forward by the Ella MacArthur Foundation called Resolve. And really, they're just the the key elements of how. Regenerating, sharing, optimising, looping, virtualising where we can, and exchanging. And it'll be exciting to hear as we move into our, our panel session some of the tangible examples happening here in Australia but also internationally to, to taking this uh, framework and working with businesses and communities uh, to bring it alive. Now, last year I heard the head of the Ella MacArthur Foundation speak, he happens to be Australian, Andrew Morlett, and was speaking about one of their latest reports on the new plastics economy. So what this slide shows, all the tonnes of plastic, and the thing to note is really the very tiny 2% return loop that goes full circle. But the statistic that just struck me so profoundly from this, uh, this presentation was that in 2050, under business as usual, we can expect to have the same quantity of plastic sitting in our oceans as we would have for the same quantity of fish, just in 2050. So 33 years time. I'm older than 33, that's not, a, that's not a long time to think about. So change towards more circular, circular flows of resources is, is certainly urgently uh, needed. Now this is a little bit of theory, but I, I think it's helpful. There's a, there's a, Giels is an uh, author who's proposed, as we start to think about system transitions, there can be niches that come along and disrupt things. So that's shown in the bottom in the green. The green arrows might go and disrupt. What are they disrupting? In the middle we have the red so-called socio-technical regime. That could be the policies and practices and technologies and institutions that come together to, to shape how our world works. So whether it's something like autonomous vehicles come along, then we'll need new laws in place to decide whether the algorithms are going to prefer to protect the passenger or the, uh, or the pedestrian, something like this. At the very top, we also have influences which may change more slowly that can relate to the landscape, our, our worldviews and patterns of how we see ourselves in the, in the world. And so whether niches will take off and be successful or not, also depends on interactions at these other levels. And getting that coordination, I think is really encouraging us to take a, a systems view. So, for the case of a circular economy, we've got a, an illustration here, starting on the right, of raw materials, going through all the production and manufacturing, and down onto the left uh, in landfill. And some of the red comments there are reflecting the socio-technical uh, regime. So we've got idea that raw materials are cheap and unlimited, goes through to uh, ownership and luxury and, and, and desire. So it's a sort of a take, make, use and discharge model where waste to landfill is really seen as no problem. If we think forward then to a circular future, look at all the newer green arrows that are there for 
not only recycling, but reusing longer use product service systems, selling the access to the service instead of the, the product access over ownership idea. Resources are scarce. We're, we're more interested in well-being, community building, and so on. And so this is the, the model for uh, the future that we need to discuss today, how to accelerate and activate. I think it's important that we fly the flag for circular economy and get people excited. And that's certainly been happening. It's had, in its early stages of flag flying, in some quarters, I would say, a bit of a sense of a, a possible silver bullet. We can have our growth, we can have uh, environmental all going well, so long as it's circular. And so there's been a sense that uh, it, it can update, that, that we might be comfortable not changing some of the older things and still uh, getting us to a, to a new place. I think we need to have more uh, critical conversations about do we want circular fast or slow. So I'm going to uh, quickly whip through just some examples here of initiatives we've been working with. Dean has been looking at transdisciplinary innovation uh, in our local uh, near UTS to look at uh, nutrient cycling. Has anyone heard of urine diversion toilets? Something to Google. They have got two compartments and you can and, uh, more effectively recycle the nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus and so on. But to embed a niche like this, you really need to think about the technology and the institutions. Dana, a colleague, is working, and for me this is a, a showpiece example, at the intersection of circular economy and health, to transform health and agriculture through uh, uh, cycling phosphorus. Who would have known, does anyone know that Sri Lanka is going organic? Part of the, uh, what they're doing is then, is, is thinking about new modes of, of farming with, with circular practices, but the reason is because there have been health impacts from agrochemicals. So the president has said, let's go organic. And so circular is, is part of some of the response to that, but it was driven really by a kidney disease that had arisen from earlier farming practices. Quick mention to the Planetary Health Alliance, that's trying to say how can we respond to global environmental change thinking through all the dimensions of how we live in urban cities. Whilst there's been a big focus in Europe, China, other uh, countries in Asia are also starting to look at the role of the sharing economy and Monique's been assessing to what extent does sharing align with circular. And the point just at the, uh, the bottom of the middle column, in this context, lower wages are great for enabling repair. But the WEEE, or waste, electrical and electronic equipment, can also be repaired in unsafe ways. You see people, uh, uh, you know, melting down some of the printed circuit boards and so on to get the metals out without uh, appropriate safety and legislation. It was mentioned this work we're doing on, on wealth from waste. This is really seeking to articulate how can Australia play a role in championing the recovery of value from secondary resources. This map up there is Melbourne. Where are all the above ground stocks of metals? Below ground, the likes of Geoscience Australia goes out to map that and, and say, how can we have companies go along and, and profit from that? And, and we're starting to establish that data for above ground stocks of resources. The final few themes I, I wish to leave you with are the importance of designing for renewable energy and resource cycles. Renewable energy is coming. We need to also think about what happens end of life for our solar cells and batteries. Big batteries that go with solar, small cells like the uh, little button cells, we've been working to design a collection system because terribly, about a person a day goes to emergency because maybe a baby, maybe an older person has swallowed one of these uh, coin cell batteries. So safe collection systems can help recycling, and, uh, but they can also help health. The University of Melbourne has got a great uh, new startup called Relectrify, which is working to take old uh, car lithium batteries and repurpose them and reuse them in uh, homes. 
And this is important because there are also, uh, I mean, it's environmental savings to be made and uh, managing lithium smarter is really an important part of what I think it needs to be a global leadership with respect to use of our resources. We've had the Paris Agreement for managing, managing uh, climate and greenhouse. We were co-authors uh, advocating in a paper in Nature earlier this year that we need a similar agreement for managing our resources that will un underpin society. All of this is changing in a digital future. We need to make sure it's done thoughtfully and done well. We're up to 3D printing of body parts, hips and so on. Will this be, will this be circular? 3D printing of concrete, great for, for structures after, uh, after the likes of a, um, a storm, an earthquake and, and situations like this. But then we need to come and say, how do we prevent it being like the promise of the paperless office that arose with the advent of the computer. If we're going to this 3D printing bespoke style of um, development, will design for recycling and reuse be as readily embedded? And finally, the idea that what we're doing here in Australia can have an impact globally. Really, the, the themes on the, on the right are the government's focus areas for where we can excel. I think we need to make sure that our economy beyond mining is rich and uh, value-adding. So advanced manufacturing is important. There's a new collaboration that's just begun around food agility to say, how will the digital transform our agricultural supply chains? Things like mining tech, we've got half of the software in, in companies around the, gl the globe that are mining comes from Australia. So can we also be leaders in software and services to the circular economy? So that's what we'd like to, uh, to think about. And, and in our uh, work, we've been charting a transition pathway to say, how do we move from a business as usual approach to a transformed system that's more circular through uh, through bridges and, and thinking collectively about this I think is uh, with stakeholders that include government and industry and the community is part of what will help catalyse the, uh, the change. So to summarise I think there's a, a real role for a national circular economy framework to have us in Australia connected with the international uh, uh, momentum in this space but also to connect a lot of the bottom up uh, fantastic work that's happening uh, in different parts of the country. Unbelievably, we don't have, for a country who's, who's got so much mining as a, uh, as a part of our exports, we don't have a national mineral strategy. We've got a national waste strategy. Why don't we think towards a circular economy uh, framework that connects responsible stewardship of resources across their, uh, their life cycle? Some work uh, by colleagues in South Australia has recently started to quantify the jobs and environmental benefits that can be afforded by the circular economy. And this is, I think, is an important plank of the political momentum building that uh, needs to accompany the, the, the on the ground action by, uh, by industries. And if there's one message that stays with you from this talk, it's about the importance of thinking in systems as we transform and bringing all along with the change. And I think circular economy promotes that systems thinking, including the important role of design, but whilst recognising at those multi-levels, we need to change worldviews, we need to change also uh, our, our regulations for how we, how we work. And there is a strong link to it improving global health. But a final caution is that the risk profile with everything circulating, if it's uh, things like food waste going to scraps and composting uh, back onto agricultural land, if there are any contaminants there, then they're going onto our food. So we need to think carefully about how we manage this in, uh, in bringing it to life so that it's, it's something that can be a, a trusted path forward. And finally, we need to do it together 
with a long-term view of uh, how it can benefit business, government, and certainly the community. So I'll finish there and look forward to further discussion on the, uh, on the panel. Thank you. <laughs>